Hey, hey, party people, it's Lycona de Chichi, and welcome to the easy peasy guide for Eden's Verse Fulmination Savage, or better known as E5S. First, we place our markers up like this, and you'll notice that the 1, 2, 3, and 4 markers are on these dotted lines. This becomes important a little later. Pull Ramu to the middle, and he'll start us off with Judgment Vault, which is a raid-wide AoE, and it'll also place down several lightning orbs around the stage at random spots. Avoid grabbing these orbs for now. Next, he'll cast Stratospear Summons, which places down one lightning staff in each corner of the stage. One of those staffs will be shorter than the others. We have our party run towards the corner with the shortest staff. Each of the taller staffs will explode with a giant AoE around them once Ramu casts Judgment Jolt. You want to get right into the corner to dodge the AoEs because these are really massive. As your party is running back to the center, the off tank will want to pick up two lightning orbs while the rest of the party still avoids them. For each lightning orb that you pick up, you'll get a surge protection stack. These stacks become important for the mechanics throughout the fight. Next, Ramu will cast Executor Summons, which summons an ad on the stage. We like to call him the Gremlin because he just gets in the way and really doesn't do anything. But the ad will tether to the person who has the highest amount of surge protection stacks. The tether can also switch between people if another person picks up an equal or higher amount of stacks. We have our off tank take two orbs because Ramu would then cast Fury's Bolt, which gives him a buff indicated by three orbs orbiting around him. During this cast, the rest of the party must grab one lightning orb to get one surge protection stack. Since the gremlin is still out on stage, having our tank take two orbs prevents the tether from switching between people randomly. Ramu will then cast Judgment Volts, which hits the entire raid for damage, and if you don't have a Surge Protection Stack, you're going to die. It also removes one Surge Protection Stack, as well as place new Lightning Orbs on the stage. The party should avoid picking up these orbs for the moment. Right after that, the person with the Gremlin Tether will get a red marker above their head, and Ramu starts casting Crippling Blow. These are both Tank Busters, so heal and shield accordingly. Immediately after those Tank Busters, he'll cast Storm Cloud Summons. We found out that this mechanic can be baited. The four people who are furthest away from Ramu will get a purple marker above their head and will place down a storm cloud in a few moments. The four closest people will get orange markers and lightning AoEs will spawn on your character and continuously explode. You don't want to be standing near each other for this. For the storm cloud folks, if you place the clouds too close to each other, they'll come together and explode. For us, we place them on the 1, 2, 3, and 4 markers because they're just at the right distance away for getting into position quickly, optimizing movement, and to help make space for the folks with the lightning on them. Once the storm clouds are placed, they'll cast electrical AoEs around them. To dodge these, we have our storm cloud team run towards the outside of the stage to make room for the folks with the exploding lightning around them. For the people who get the orange markers, spread out into cardinal directions around the boss since you don't want to hit each other with your own lightning AoE. You have to pick up a lightning orb because in order to cleanse your lightning, you'll have to get hit by the storm clouds AoE. The only way you can survive the storm clouds AoE is if you have at least one surge protection stack. Once everyone has dodged and cleansed their debuff, come back to the center and get ready for a knockback called Levin Force. You can use your anti-knockbacks here, but if you don't have it, you'll want to get knocked back towards the sides or the corners of the stage and not into a storm cloud by accident. After that, you'll want to pick up a lightning orb to prep for the next mechanic. Next up, there's a chance that he'll cast Fury's Bolt or not. This in part determines how we handle the next mechanic. So let's go over both versions and see what's really happening here. Ramu will then cast Tribunal Summons, which will spawn five horses on the edges of the stage. Two on either side and one in the middle. The middle horse will dash through the middle and knock everyone back towards the outside edges. Depending on whether Ramu casted Fury's Bolt or not will determine whether you get a strong or a weak knockback. If Ramu casted Fury's Bolt from before, then you'll see three orbs around him transfer to the middle horse like this. If that horse has those orbs around it, then it's going to be a strong knockback. So for that, we stand right on the outside edge of this line going through the center of the stage. If Ramu did not cast Fury's Bolt, then that horse will not have the orbs around them. Thus, it's going to be a weak knockback. For this, we stand right on the dotted line. It doesn't matter which side you stand on for the knockback, but I would recommend your party choose a side and stick with it just so everyone's together for buffs and mitigation. Right after the horse knockback, he'll cast Crippling Blow, which is the tank buster, followed by Judgment Volts, and then Fury's Bolt. At this point, everyone should grab one orb to get at least one stack of surge protection. He'll then cast Thunderstorm, which is a yellow dodge the AoEs and don't hit each other with your own mechanic. For this, you just want to be careful as to not run on top of each other or cross paths with another party member. 
so spreading out across the stage to give yourselves enough room to move around is best in this situation. Also during this mechanic, everyone will get an AoE around them in two sets of four, meaning that only four people at a time will get the AoEs around them. Having one surge protection stack is what allows you to survive this AoE. In the case that you get accidentally hit with the small orange AoEs that you're trying to dodge, you can pick up another lightning orb since there are a few left on the stage in an emergency. After that resolves, Ramu will then cast Executor Summons, which brings out the Gremlin ad again, so the off-tank will need to pick up two Lightning Orbs. Then he'll cast Crippling Blow for a Tank Buster. At this point, you'll want to stack in really tight as he'll cast Stepped Leader, which is basically the same mechanic as Twister from T5 or Yukov. For this mechanic, you have to move out of the spot you were just standing in once the cast bar has finished casting. The Gremlin ad will then put the red marker on the tank for a Tank Buster. Ramu will then cast Judgment Volts again, and everyone should pick up at least one orb to get a Surge Protection stack. Next, he'll cast Furies 14, which primes us up for the next Mega Mechanic, which has a lot of stuff going off at once, so let's go over what happens here in detail. First up, one of the tanks should grab three orbs, while the rest of the party each grab one orb for Surge Protection stacks. He'll cast Strato Spear Summons, which will place 14 spears on the stage in two rows. He'll then cast Tribunal Summons, which will put one horse in the middle and four horses on just one side of the stage. This means the safe side is going to be on the opposite side of where those horses are spawning, and that's the side of the stage that you want to get knocked back into. Ramu will jump to the middle edge and start casting Centaur's Charge. There will be a bluish yellow arrow right in front of him, and we have our tank that has the three Surge Protection stacks stand in this and pop some cooldowns. The other seven party members will each need to line up so that when you get a knockback, you'll break your own staff. All seven staffs need to be broken or else giant AoEs will explode from the staffs that are left standing. We gave ourselves a one to seven priority list with our reference point being the side which Ramu jumps to on the stage. Once we're all in position, the knockback will happen so you'll get pushed into your staff and break it, and the entire side will be safe. For the tank that takes the hit in the middle, you'll need to run back to the safe side to dodge the AoEs coming from the staffs on the opposite side of the stage. Once all that resolves, pull Ramu back into the center and he'll cast Fury's Bolt. Then he'll cast Stepped Leader again, but this is different this time because he's got those orbs around him. For this, everyone will get a donut AoE around them, so you need to stack in tight, or disengage to Narnia. Next, Ramu will cast Chain Lightning, which will target and appear on the two healers. The Chain Lightning will then jump to the next closest person once the three second timer counts down to zero. There's also a small personal AoE that appears around you when you take the Lightning, so you can't stack on top of each other. Also, the person who just passed the Chain Lightning can't take it again for about 6 seconds, meaning that the lightning has to be passed twice before you can take it again. For our group, we came up with the diamond strat. We split our party into two groups. With a healer in each group, we just pass the chain lightning around in a diamond. Also to note here that during chain lightning, Ramu will cast crippling blow and judgment bolts. Once the chain lightning is finished, Ramu will then cast executor summons which will spawn the gremlin ad again, and the tank will need to pick up at least two lightning orbs so that way the tether will stay on that tank while the rest of the party picks up one lightning orb to prep for thunderstorm. Spread out and dodge the AoEs, while the one tank that has the ad will get the red marker again. And there's also a sneaky stepped leader mechanic in this that everyone needs to dodge at the end of the cast out of their own spot and to make sure they're not dodging into someone else's stepped leader. Pull Ramu back to the center and then he'll cast Crippling Blow, followed by Judgment Vaults. He'll then cast Furies 14 again, which is the exact same mechanic as last time, but he's got a few more horses to horse around with. As from before, one tank will get three orbs to stand in that yellowish blue arrow, while the rest of the party will take one orb and then line up to break your staffs. Once you break your staffs and get knocked back, if you look on the far side of the stage, you'll see lots of horses over there and then one empty slot. Since we know those horses will dash in a straight line, we can move to that empty lane to dodge the horse dashes. Those horse dashes will also put down lightning orbs, and so as you're making your way back to the center of the stage, make sure you pick up a lightning orb for yourself. He'll then cast Fury's Bolt, followed by Judgment Volts. He'll then cast Storm Cloud Summons, which we handle exactly the same as before. If you're baiting the Storm Clouds, go to 1, 2, 3, and the 4 markers, and then dodge to the outside. If you're the inside party, cardinal positions around the boss, and remember you need to pick up an orb before you cleanse your lightning in the Thundercloud AoE. Head back to the middle and prepare for the Leaven Force knockback, so use your anti-knockbacks here, or make sure you don't get hit back into the storm clouds. 
He'll then cast Judgment Bolt, so heal accordingly. So next we'll get Chain Lightning, so split your party into two groups and use the Diamond Strat to pass it from one person to another. During Chain Lightning, there's also a Crippling Blow Tank Buster and Judgment Bolt, so you're gonna have to heal and mitigate. Once the Chain Lightning finishes, he'll cast Fury's Bolt and then Stepped Leader, which will be the Donut AoE. So stack or disengage. At this point, Ramu will cast five sets of Judgment Volts from here on out. Sometimes he'll cast Fury's Bolt before the Judgment Volt, so you'll need to pick up an orb. I recommend just grabbing an orb right after each Judgment Volt, just so you're not caught off guard. At this point, it's better to play it safe and go for the clear. Ramu then casts Fury's 14, which places down the staffs on the stage. We never hit this final Enrage as a group, but I suspect that you can't get rid of those staffs after he places them down. He also has the dialogue box that says, The end hath come, prepare thyself. So it seems that we just cleared it right before the final Enrage. And if you've made it this far into the fight, congratulations! You can put your umbrellas away because you just got your first clear of Eden's Verse Fulmination Savage. I'd like to thank my raid team because they're awesome and without them, these guides wouldn't be possible. We all also agreed that this first fight of the new raid tier felt a bit more challenging with the mechanics than in previous raids, which made it solid and entertaining. And as always, if you're making good progress on the fight, there's no need to change your strats with the ones found in this guide. So hopefully this easy peasy guide has dropped some knowledge on your giga brains out there when you're challenging this savage fight. If you want, you can always subscribe for more guides like this and hit the like button if you think that this helped you get your first clear. Until next time, keep on adventuring.